Hello my lovelies, this is Simsfell and welcome to episode 58 of The Sims 4 Vampire Amazon series Generation 2. Firstly, I would like to say that some of you lovelies have been making some beautiful fan art for me and asking about whether or not it is okay to go ahead and make artistic impressions of the characters in this series and I just want to say yes, of course it is. I love seeing fan art from you lovely people. You guys have so much talent among you and it's so nice to see the passion you have for the characters we make, the stories that we develop and the series as a whole and I've been thinking that from now on whenever you guys do send in fan art for the series I kind of want to showcase them at the beginning of the episodes just to give a little bit of a hats off to you guys and to show my appreciation since that is the only ways that I can think of to let you guys put your art out there and let other fans as well see what you've come up with. So with that said and done, let's start off the episode. Now at the end of the previous episode, we had Queen Arkissa and the two ladies she brought with her to the mysterious forest, kind of surrounded by these, well, mysterious men. And it looks like the leader finally managed to corner her and talk to her about something that they have been waiting for for a long time. So the leader approached Queen Narkish, uh, Nark geez, what am I saying? Queen Narkissa, for a second I forgot her name. Queen Narkissa for some help and you guys were wondering what that help could possibly be. And it concerns the last female of their species. So, the help that this leader over here, whose name is Barveus, I mentioned, he wants Queen Narcissa, or not wants, that is a strong word, he's not exactly in a position to be wanting anything, but he hopes that Queen Narcissa can help his small band that's been left out of their entire species, they are known as the Forest Walkers, they've been chased away from their traditional homelands, by what and who we are not exactly sure and I know some of you lovelies are very very anxious for the Salazars and the Royal Coven to not get into another war and I'm hoping that is also going to be the case but they have found themselves exiled from their homeland and the only place they could think of to actually go was to the Vampire Queen herself who is a bit of a terrifying figure but again they were just pulling at straws they had nothing else left to do except go to her and Barveus is hoping that perhaps the queen is going to have mercy on the fact that his species is on the brink of extinction and give them a little bit of a haven and a safe place to stay. Also, the female, the last female of his species, is not currently with their band, but she is hidden away in the mountains and he is thinking once he can ensure that the queen has agreed and everyone's going to be safe here, to bring that female on down and then hopefully the queen can ensure a safe spot or a, f a safe few spots where they can start rebuilding their home, where they can go ahead and breed up their species again and ensure that their numbers are, you know, back to normal. And I don't know, I feel as though Queen Narcissa is somewhat inclined to help them, particularly because this concerns the last female of a species. Now yes, they aren't vampires, but then again they are, or she is going to be this forest walker, the last forest walker female. And I think the idea of ensuring that a species is going to have even more females is appealing to Queen Narcissa, especially compared to her mother and even her older sister who passed away. I see Narcissa as a more benevolent queen, so it just makes sense to me that her heart would ache for them and she would try and help them. But, of course, Narcissa is also a vampirist, so I don't think she would go ahead. Oh, jeez, she's upset now. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at that. She's upset over the fact that the species is having to go through this. But I don't think at the same time that she is just going to give them everything for free, because as I said, she is a vampirist at heart. And maybe the trade-off, I think, that she is going to make with the forest walkers and with Barveus is that yes, she will agree to help them under one condition. The condition she has is that whenever a vampirus reaches teenhood in her coven, 
they will be brought to the mysterious forest to hunt and feast on one of the forest walker males. So they will have to involuntarily give themselves over for a drink as a first drink um, to, because I think the fact that they are about to go extinct makes them seem like a delicacy to the queen and to the vampires. And I think for that reason, the queen would say, that's the exchange you have to make. Now we're not gonna kill you or anything, but whether you like it or not, we want you to serve as prey only on the days, only on the days when a teenager or a vampire in the royal coven reaches teenhood or her womaning. So I think Barveus, by the way he is seeming right now, is going to agree to that because he is at his wit's end and the only thing he can think of to protect the last female is of course to agree with whatever demands the vampire queen has. And Narcissa, part of this, I think, is going to say that to show her goodwill, she is going to arrange for a separate place for their female to live and for their female to have children and take care of children, a nursery of sorts. And she is going to assign a vampire guardian, so a forest guardian, to that area or to that nursery so that the forest guardian can both protect his species in the forest and in the separate nursery she's going to establish, or the nursery she's going to establish for them. So I think that is the discussion and the dealings they're having with each other just now. And look at that, he's a vegetarian. Well, that's not a surprise. But we have that said and done over here, and huh, I guess that is the deal. And this is the lot and the way it looks. So they have this magical, mystical magical bean portal tree, which I'm not entirely sure where it takes them, but it must be some sort of spiritual connection that the forest walkers have with something, probably something spiritual to do in their culture. I've got a bunch of gnomes around the place, some sitting spots, but look at that. It's very nature-oriented, which makes a lot of sense for them. Uh, but they do have access to foods and stuff, so yeah, it's quite fascinating that they're living in a place like this. But again, they're happy living the way they are living. And as long as, as, long as they can go ahead and uh, just do whatever they want, live a life, a happy life in this little haven that they have established, I think Barveus is quite happy. He's not going to pose a threat to the queen at all. He knows he can't really do anything much. He's kind of just shown his heart in his sleeves and let the queen decide what's to be done with him. And she has decided to show off her benevolent nature. Also, she is in her third trimester, so she's going to give birth at some point pretty soon. And I'm sorry if I've been ranting too long. As for Persephone, and it seems as though he's told the other men, the forest walkers, to back off. We have Bantle over here, just, uh, I think, keeping guard so he can escort the ladies or run to his leader if anything should go wrong. But apart from that, I think he is quite okay with everything that's been going on. Obviously, Persephone is a little bit tense. This is the first time she's gone out somewhere with the queen in an operation like this. And to be surrounded by so many of a foreign species, I think, made her a little bit alarmed. And look at that. She is not impressed with with Arabafin, with this forest walker. She's not impressed with them whatsoever. I don't think she likes them very much. No, she doesn't like them taken um, for surprise, I think. Morgana is also very annoyed. I feel like Morgana's annoyed at the fact that she couldn't help the queen. The fact that she tried to seduce the leader, but he wasn't interested in her. And I don't think it's because she feels offended that he wouldn't be compelled by her beauty. I think it's more so that she turned out to be useless to the queen in the situation. She's probably very frustrated about that, especially because the queen is pregnant and that is her stepdaughter about to be born. So of course she would be concerned for the queen and her well-being. But I think now that the queen has figured out what's happening here, she is quite content to return back to the castle now that the hunting grounds has opened. And yeah, I think officially she has established this place as a hunting grounds. It is a protected nature reserve, but it's gonna be open for hunting whenever a young vampire turns into 18 and enters her womanhood. So there we go. And I think they are going to head back to the castle. Yes, they're gonna head back to the castle. And we probably will be seeing this female arrive in the next episode, 
or at the end of this episode. I don't know. We'll see when it happens. But look at that. The men are keeping guard. They're scouting <laughs> out here in the forest and keeping guard so that no one can sneak up on them, but also probably to give their leader some privacy with the vampire queen. And I don't know what this would have done for Narcissa's reputation among the magical beings of the realm, but she's definitely done something interesting. And I don't feel as though if um, her mother, Queen Sheba, was in her place, would do the same thing. What do you guys think? Let me know. But I feel as though Sheba would have eliminated them, either eliminated them or let them actually go extinct. I don't think Shiva would have helped them out like Narcissa is doing. But this is actually the perfect timing for them to come ahead and ask for help because we do have the reappointment happening today, actually. So we'll see whether it's in this episode or the next episode. It probably will be in this episode. But we do have the reappointment happening, which means all the roles that... Morgana's private army kind of encompassed the sims that we lost who are in charge of various aspects of the kingdom that joined Morgana's private army. They were going to be replaced, but also a new role has now been established of the forest guardian, which the queen is going to pick. So I'm actually quite excited to go ahead, check the gallery and see what sort of sims you guys have left for me. But I'm not just looking at the newest submissions. I will be going back and looking at all the submissions you guys have given me from the beginning because I know a bunch of you put your heart and soul into making these sims for me and you get really excited at the possibility of having them in the series. And for one reason or another, I'm not able to have all of the sims you make at any point in time. But that doesn't mean I'm going to ignore the sims that you've made for me pre previously. Because I have said that don't worry guys, if your sims don't get picked now, we'll always have a chance in the future. And I want to go ahead and be true to my word and make sure that I'm trying to incorporate all of your lovely creations as well in this magical world that we are building. Okay, so the queen has returned to the castle. Now, do I have the options... Right, autonomy needs to be on full, thank you very much. I like my sims having control over the things they do, so wonderful. And now that we've returned to the castle, everyone's, I think, oh, except Morgana. She hasn't opened her present. Although I don't know, oh yeah, she was proud in the previous episode, I think, that she convinced the queen to go on this operation. I don't know how she feels about it now, but I think she's still quite happy. Even though she might have been useless at the operation, she's happy she incited the operation. So she's going to go ahead and open up a present or get a reward for herself. And we'll see what sort of reward she has. Freya, meanwhile, is quite hungry. She's still having trouble adjusting to the castle. And some of you lovelies were saying that at first you didn't really like Genevieve because you felt as though her name was pretty bland for princess. But as time is going, you're starting to realize that there's something very steady about her, especially when you compare her to her sister Freya, who is a little bit unstable or unstable. So that was an interesting point you guys made, and I completely agree. I feel as though Genevieve on her own, maybe, isn't exactly an interesting character to me, but when you put her together with her sister Freya, and if the queen has another baby girl, if you put her together with her sisters, I think because of, especially Freya, the type of personality she has, it really brings out something that's interesting in Genevieve, and just the friction between the two females, I think, is going to result in some pretty cool stories in the future, so I'm excited about that. Lady Morgana got one foe zone. She will treasure it. Okay, nice. So she got some crystal. And let's see, where is this crystal? I think she should go put this crystal down in her dungeon somewhere. So we're going to go ahead. Now she doesn't really collect crystals. But I think it would still be cool to pop this here somewhere. Yeah, I don't mind leaving that on the shelf. Also, I kind of feel as though I should start actually putting the stuff, some of the things they get around the place. Well, I do try and do that. But there's also, you know, a bit of a look that I go for sometimes. But yeah, I think we'll put that in her little area. That'll be quite nice. She's got a whole bunch of things. And this is just typical of any... Priestess in the coven, they tend to, if you look at their inventories, have all these crazy plants and things, which is awesome in my opinion, but look at that, they've got all these things to work with, and 
stuff that they've plucked and found and things they could use and potions and all these, you know, crazy ingredients that could be put to use for various things. Which is pretty cool in my opinion. I find that pretty awesome. And 6 a.m. is about to hit pretty soon. When it does, we are going to start the reappointments. But while that is taking a place, let's quickly go ahead and actually reassign all the whims that the ladies want. What do they want to work on now? So Freya wants to win a game of darts. I'll put that in. That probably means she wants to actually spend time with someone. Even though she is lo a loner and all of that, I do think from time to time she does want to spend time with someone else. I'll let... Actually, Genevieve, can you wake up, honey? I'm sorry, I know you're sleeping, but she wants to challenge us into foosball. So actually, both the sisters are feeling a little bit ambitious. So, or competitive, so I guess they could spend time doing that with each other. Um, she didn't have any whim to do with the person, did she know? Okay, Persephone actually wants to be funny with Narcissa. Interesting. I think she wants reassurance from Narcissa after the little operation they had. I think she felt a little bit caught off guard and she wants reassurance from her. So that is completely fine and we still have a bit of lag. Jeez. I don't know what's causing this lag, but I've been having lag in my game. I guess it's on and off a little bit. Hmm. It's a bit irritating, but hopefully that fixes itself over time. Lady Morgana wants to... Oh my goodness! She wants to woohoo with the queen? They haven't even woohooed yet. This is crazy, guys. They have not woohooed yet. They've been married for a while, but they have not woohooed yet. That means they have to have their first kiss. <gasps> oh my goodness. And the queen's feeling flirty, but the queen wants to be friendly with Genevieve. So she is actually thinking, she's giving a lot of affection to Morgana, I must say. But I think the queen is thinking more so about her daughter than anything else. And I will leave off super quick, guys, because we had the reappointment and I do feel as though we can fit that in this episode. I'm going to go ahead, look at the gallery, assign or appoint all the ladies to their respective roles and then I will be back to show you guys who exactly got picked. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, we're back at the castle and all the ladies have assembled in the throne room because the queen has gone through all the applications of all the vampiresses in the queendom who put their name forward to join these various roles and she has decided upon the four new vampires. I think we lost four but one of them didn't have a role in anything as far as I remember but we have four new vampires that have been appointed and I just want to let you guys know that when I choose the submissions I don't necessarily go ahead by who created who, I just look at the vampires and if I like any or if I feel drawn to a particular one for a role, I pick them and then I look at the person who submitted later on. So I just want to let you guys know that does not influence my decision in any way. But I'm going to take you all into travel and we're going to see the four new appointments. So here we go. Um, we're going to go to travel and the queen has made her decision. Ah, here we go. Now these are the vampires that the queen has chosen. We are going to begin. Should we begin in Brendleton Bay? No. No, we'll, we'll go begin in Newcrest. So we had appointments, one appointment in Brendleton Bay, one appointment in, or three appointments in Newcrest. So, first and foremost, we had the ambassador of Newcrest and the architect that we lost. So... These are the new vampires that's chosen for the roles. We have Justine Boucher chosen as the Newcrest ambassador. And beside her, we have Briley Samuels who has been chosen as the architect. And then the next role we have is over at the prison fort. We were in need of a prison overlord. We have over here the wonderful... Aradea Vramir, who has been chosen, she's got elf blood apparently, which is really fascinating, but she's been chosen as the prison overlord. So I'm quite excited about that. And last but not least, over in Brindleton Bay, we have, of course, the new role of Forest Guardian. We have put that new member over here on Deadgrass Isle, I think. Island is what this place is called. Yep, Deadgrass Isle. 
and that is where we're going to be having the last refuge the place is called for the last mem last female of the forest walkers so she's going to be staying over there at the last refuge with the forest garden protecting her and that's where she's going to raise her children both boys and girls of course because they need that to sustain the entire population as a whole but the lady chosen for this wonderful job is Georgia Chapel, and she looks really cool and I feel like she makes a pretty awesome forest guardian. But if you lovelies recognize your own sims and your own submissions, please feel free to jump down in the comments and give yourselves a shout out. I would love to see your excitement for getting these ladies chosen. And with that said and done guys, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye bye. After the reappointments and the establishment of the last refuge, the Queen sent Lady Morgana to meet with the Forest Guardian. Her assignment was to ensure the smooth transition of the female Forest Walker into Deadgrass Isle. While she was there, the Queen hoped Morgana could provide some extra help. What with all the herbs and ingredients she carried, the monarch was sure something to boost fertility could be cooked up. When everything was ready and the ships began making dock, Morgana and Georgia approached the pier to welcome their new guest. From a royal ship given by the queen emerged a slender woman in a mossy green gown threaded with colorful flowers. Her name was Quavrena. Quavrena settled in pretty quickly and full well knowing the dire situation of her species ingested Morgana's herbal concoction. Then, as soon as the ships could set out again, she was heading back to the mysterious forest. Now that she was reunited with the others, she could pick a mate and begin bearing the next generation. Not long after she set foot in camp, a male by the name of Arabifin approached her. He was eager to be in her company, and while it wasn't who she had expected, she wasted no time in seeking the privacy of the forest. When finally night drew itself over the bay, Quavrena knew she carried something important inside her. With the knowledge that her species would no longer die out, she returned to the last refuge.